Yeah, so um so I hate X-Men First Class. I mean, I really really freaking hate X-Men First Class. With the white hot intensity of a thousand suns, I revile that movie. That movie thinking about it turns my stomach. I wish the machine from inter- Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind was really true and I could selectively go into my memory and delete things that cause me constant pain because I would delete ever knowing that that movie exists. It was so bad on so many levels. And I know a lot of people for some reason that I still to this day cannot fathom like that movie, X-Men First Class, and think it's one of the best of the X-Men franchise. I don't know what's wrong with you people. Go over to my other video where I delve into the crap fest that that movie was. X-Men First Class is the worst piece of garbage I have ever had the misfortune of watching. And as such, I was very, very, very skeptical about X-Men Days of Future Past. It literally was to the point where every time I would see a preview, a trailer for it or whatever, I would kind of get all sad and depressed and look down at the floor because I knew two things. One, I knew I was gonna see it because I have to, I have to give it a shot and everything. I just didn't want to. I just could not see how coming from the X-Men first class movie and being a sequel to that, that it could be anything but crap. Yes, I know it's also a sequel and continuation of the original trilogy, which I love. I love the original X-Men continuity and that this movie, Days of Future Past, is bridging the two movies together, the continuity of the original trilogy and the continuity of X-Men First Class. So I could kind of try to hang my hat and hang my hopes on the parts of it that are hearkening back to the original trilogy. But at the end of the day, it's still also a continuation of X-Men First Class. And how could it possibly be any good if it is any connection to that pant load of garbage of a movie? So I went to see it, and honestly, though I tried to be as objective as possible, it's probably fair to say that this movie already had two strikes against it, in my estimation, for having any connection X-Men First Class. But I was very, very pleasantly surprised. So they can make a good movie out of that cast from X-Men First Class and those characters and that bit of a revamp of the X-Men continuity from the from the movies, that bit of a, a detour from the original trilogy that they did in X-Men First Class. It can be done because they did it. They made a good movie. Days of Future Past is an excellent, excellent X-Men film. Probably uh, right up there with the first X-Men and uh, and maybe Wolverine. The Wolverine, not X-Men Origins Wolverine, but The Wolverine. I put that one pretty high on my list as well. I thought that was a very good one. Not quite as good as X2, but uh, that's... A really tall order. That's one of the best comic book movies ever made. But anyway, so Days of Future Past, one of the better X-Men films. So I'm going to give kind of my review in this episode of Random Fandom, and I'm really going to be juxtaposing Days of Future Past with X-Men First Class, because it's just, it boggled my mind that I so hated X-Men First Class, yet so actually really enjoyed and liked Days of Future Past. So it's going to be kind of a juxtaposition as to why I feel that Days of Future Past was successful where X-Men First Class was failure. But mostly a review of Days of Future Past. One of the main things I didn't like about X-Men First Class was the plot. The overarching plot, the driving plot of the movie was terrible. When Shaw wanted to cause nuclear war, destroy the planet so that mutants would take over, which was horrendously stupid because all the mutants would die in the nuclear war as well, and even if there were five or ten left, the world would be a desolate wasteland after the nuclear war, and who wants to rule over that? So, the plot of X-Men First Class was terrible, but the plot of Days of Future Past was solid. 
And why was it solid? Because it was almost identical to the plot of the Days of Future Past storyline from the comics. It was great in that regard of somebody needing to go into the past to stop a pivotal event from happening that would cause a domino effect, ripple effect throughout the rest of history, making the world the terrible, dystopian, sentinel-run future that it turns into. And they kind of detracted a little bit from the original story. In the original comic story, it was Shadow Cat, Kitty Pride being sent back into the past, not Wolverine. I think it's much better using Wolverine. He's a much better, more interesting character to follow. And it was that they were trying to stop the assassination of the president in the comic book. But in the movie, they were trying to stop the assassination of Trask. Very minor differences, really. I mean, this is just the most minor of things, but the plot itself is almost identically similar. So they used a solid plot this time around, a plot that, while is a little bit more complicated than simply a, you know, James Bond style bad guy wants to blow up the world, you know, we're dealing with a time travel plot this time around, it's still relatively understandable relatable to most audiences. They understand what's going on. It's a story that we've seen before in stuff like Terminator. But if anything, Terminator ripped it off from the comics because, I mean, the comic Days of Future Past came out in 1980. Terminator was 84. But I'm not going to quibble about who came up with the idea first. Time travel has been a staple of sci-fi since sci-fi has been around. But the plot was solid. It was a good story. It was a, uh, a good conflict that the characters had to overcome and it also got to the point where it was multifaceted so we had the the different stuff they had to get done they had to get professor xavier out of his slump they had to track down mystique and keep her from killing trask as well as keeping her out of trask's hands because if trask got his hands on her and used her dna to beef up his sentinels they would become unstoppable Plus, then they let Magneto out, and Magneto just went right back to his default setting of, I'm going to frickin' kill the humans in power, because that's all he seems to want to do. Start a war, start a war, start a war. He, he was a bigger threat to starting the war between mutants and humans than Trask was, really. Which was another thing I liked, is that Magneto was very much a bad guy in this again. They had completely abandoned the he might be good, he might be bad of X-Men First Class. I like Magneto as a villainous character. I really don't want to see him as a sympathetic hero character. Do you know why? Because he's a genocidal maniac. He wants to kill all humans. I'm sorry, I thought that was a bad thing. I've been seeing, ever, ever since X-Men First Class came out, I've seen so many people on message boards and on the internet saying how much they agreed with Magneto. And, oh yeah, if I was in that situation, I'd do everything Magneto did. And if I was one of the mutants back then, I'd so join Magneto's team. Really? So you just want to slaughter 7 billion people just because some of them, a small percentage of them, might have it in for you? Magneto's a genocidal psychopath. He's a good villain. He is not good as a sympathetic character, as far as I'm concerned. So Days of Future Past did a good job in making him the bad guy again. The conclusion climax of the movie, they had to stop him from jump-starting the whole war, um, even worse than Mystique was going to by assassinating Trask. So multifaceted plot, a lot of different stuff going on and a lot of different conflicts they had to squash. So it was good on the plot aspect. Another thing, the cast of Days of Future Past was great. It was an excellent, excellent cast. And I don't just mean the actors themselves, I mean the additional mutants. So we have the, the mainstay mutants, Xavier, Magneto, Mystique, Wolverine, the ones who have been there for virtually all the movies anyway. But one of the things I really disliked about X-Men First Class, 
the additional mutants were losers. They were. It was like the screenwriters and director for X Men First Class just reached into a hat with random mutants' names on little slips of paper, pulled out four or five of them, just went, "Okay, these are the ones we're going with." They picked bottom of the barrel mutants. Like Angel, not the cool Angel with the feathered wings. No, the insect wing Angel chick. And as much as I kind of like Banshee in the comics, they made him a wuss in the movie. And Havoc was kind of a loser as well. He didn't do anything worthwhile. Bad guys, you had Riptide, who didn't even have any lines. I'm not even sure Azazel had any lines. I mean, all the additional mutant characters in first class were losers, worthless. They were barely worthwhile as filler characters. But Days of Future Past, the additional mutants who weren't primary characters, awesome, awesome characters. You had Bishop in there, kicking ass the way Bishop does. And you frankly, you can't have an X-Men time travel movie without Bishop doing his thing. You had Sunspot in there, flaming on and burning the crap out of everything. You had Warpath. If you're unfamiliar with Warpath, he's a badass. Jumping around with his daggers and... I mean, everybody else who were fighting the Sentinels were like, you know using superpowers to blast him with ice and fire and stuff like that. he just jump on their back and start cutting into him. He's a badass. Blink! Blink never gets any play. Blink is an awesome character, and I think everybody knows that now after seeing her teleportation abilities. So you had a lot of really awesome secondary mutant characters in this one who were just tearing it up all over the place. Not to mention the return of some of the old favorites like Iceman and Storm coming back again. Colossus in there as well. So, a lot of really awesome mutant characters giving us some really good action scenes. Much better than Angel flying around spitting fireballs at Banshee as he tries to hover over the water and barely manages to do so. No, we had ass-kicking super mutant versus mega sentinels going on through a lot of the movie. So it had a lot of great action, a lot of great mutants. Very much enjoyed the secondary mutant roster of this movie. So also, they seem to have dropped... The loser mutants from X-Men First Class, keeping the good ones. Keeping the, keeping the characters who I didn't particularly hate. You know, I didn't have any severe problem in X-Men First Class with James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender as young Xavier, young Magneto. Only problem I really had was Fassbender's accent was all over the place in X-Men First Class. He got it under control for Days of Future Past. He kept one singular accent, so that was good. And Mystique... I didn't like what they did with the character of Mystique in X-Men First Class, making her a wuss, and, you know, in the original trilogy, she was the biggest ass-kicker around. X-Men First Class, she was just having a crush on every guy who made eye contact with her. No, she had a thing for Beast. She had a thing for Xavier, which was creepy as all hell, because that's her adopted brother. And people online are saying, well, you know... He should have returned her affection, and they could have been a cute couple. They're brother and sister! Well, not by blood. That doesn't make it any less creepy. So, her having a thing for Xavier was weird, and then, of course, she wanted Magneto. So, I didn't like the fact that she just gravitated towards any guy who made eye contact with her, and she was such a wuss. Even in the big climactic final fight, she didn't do anything in X-Men First Class. But she was a badass in Days of Future Past. And she could care less about relationships. She was not into guys. She didn't want to have a boyfriend. Nothing like that. She was the badass that Mystique is meant to be. So they fixed her character. And I never had a big problem with Jennifer Lawrence as the character. So uh, much more satisfied with what they did with Mystique this time around. While I'm on the notion of cast and characters, gotta talk a little bit about Quicksilver, because a lot of people saying he stole the show, even though he was only in the movie for a very small percentage of the time. He only had about a 10-minute window that he was in the film. But he made quite an impression. The way they did his powers was pretty good. 
not only just his quick flitting around from one place to another, but then the the big scene in the kitchen where time slows down and you can sort of see him running around the room. I don't like the way a lot of people saying how he froze time. He doesn't freeze time. He just moves so fast. He speeds himself up, really. Time itself is going normal, but that's just, you know, arguing semantics. So they did a really good job of showing how his powers work and utilizing him as a pretty damn powerful mutant. I wasn't a big fan of how he looked. I mean, I'm sorry, but the weird-looking silver jacket turning him into kind of a pseudo-hipster. Like, he would be a hipster nowadays. I'm not even sure what that look would have been in the 70s. It might have still been considered a hipster in the 70s, just the term didn't have as much stigma attached to it as it does now. So I I would have preferred a bit more serious look, not quite so neo-hipster punk kind of a thing. And his the way his personality showed through... Kind of a clownish character, cracking jokes and and being a bit of a wise ass. I'm not sure that really works with Quicksilver either. Quicksilver is supposed to be a very arrogant character because his powers are really good. And as one of the premier speedsters in the Marvel Universe, he can literally run circles around virtually anybody. But he's supposed to be a very serious yet arrogant character. He doesn't have much of a sense of humor at all, and I would have preferred seeing a bit more of a serious character out of him. He can be arrogant, he can be a jackass even, not so much on the cracking wise though. And also, they tried to make an allusion in the movie to him and Magneto being related, because, of course, if you ever read the comics, you know Quicksilver is Magneto's son. And in the movie, he breaks Magneto out of jail. And then at one point, he say, says to Magneto, so you can control metal, huh? Huh, my mother met a guy who could do that. Alluding to the fact that at one point, Magneto and Quicksilver's mom had an affair, and that's where you get Quicksilver. Yeah, the guy who played Quicksilver, Evan Peters, only 10 years younger than Magneto, and he looks every bit of that. They do not look like they have a huge age disparity between them. So I'm just like, what, was Magneto supposed to have had sex with your mom when he was 10? Because there's not enough of an age disparity between you two for Magneto to even be close to being your dad. So I would have preferred if they left that joke out and just, you know, if you're going to retcon stuff for the movies, retcon it so that it, you know, it works. Uh, You don't have to try to throw a little wink to the head nod to the comics by saying oh well he might be quicksilver's dad yeah no not unless he was banging quicksilver's mom before he hit puberty and also there was another scene later on very quick one when you see quicksilver playing with a sister his sister who's supposed to be like 10 or something obviously a lot younger than him no quicksilver and his sister wanda scarlet witch they're twins They're not supposed to be different ages. So, again, um, just a couple little minor nitpicks. Ultimately, though, Quicksilver was done rather well. So don't get mad at me for my minor little nitpicks. That's just the stuff that occurs to me while I'm watching the movie as a big-time comic reader. And one final thing I do have to say about the film that I thought was a lot better than First Class, was that it ended on a positive note. Days of Future Past ended on a positive note where there seems to be hope for peaceful coexistence between mutants and humans. It's It ends with Mystique rejecting Magneto's fatalist attitude of us versus them, mutants versus humans, the war's coming, it's gonna happen, so choose your side now. No, she rejects that. She she refuses to kill Trask, even though she has him dead to rights. Also, Peter Dinklage is Trask. Awesome casting. Who? How can you not love Peter Dinklage? He's one of the best actors around. And she refuses to kill him. She accepts Xavier's vision of the world and, and a hope for something better and a better tomorrow. Magneto's proven wrong. The, the politicians... 
uh, who were about to be killed by Magneto get rescued by Xavier and, and the other mutants. So there's a chance for peaceful coexistence. They scrap the Sentinel program, they arrest Trask, and when Wolverine goes back to present day, everything seems to be great. Everything is back to normal, the students are back in the mansion, and even a lot of the characters who had died throughout the original trilogy have come back to life. So they made a better, brighter future by bringing mutants and humans together at the end of the movie, which is always what I felt the story of X-Men should be. You can have your fights between the mutants and humans, you can have your prejudiced people on both sides, but ultimately it should come down to there's not that much difference between us. We're all just people, and the only way to survive for any of us is together, to come together as one people, mutants and humans together, and learn to live together. That's not the sense I got at the end of X-Men First Class. The end of X-Men First Class really put it on the notion that humans were assholes and they were never going to accept mutants and there was never going to be anything but hatred and strife. Um, and, and even Xavier, to a certain point, agreed with that notion when he refused to work with the CIA and he blanked the mind of Moira McTaggart so she wouldn't remember anything about any of them because they had to go underground because they couldn't trust the humans. So even, even the good guys in X-Men First Class ended on the note of humans suck. But in Days of Future Past, much more hopeful conclusion uh, proved that Xavier was right, Magneto was wrong, and that's how they're moving forward. And I especially believe that that's how they're going to move forward into the next one with the notion that Magneto's view is wrong because... I don't know how you do Apocalypse in a way that makes humans the bad guys. Apocalypse is the true and true bad guy, and all he wants is the destruction of humanity. That's all he's ever wanted, for mutants to be the ruling class on the planet and humans to be non-existent anymore. Much more so than Magneto ever did. I mean, Magneto's a pussycat compared to Apocalypse, so... That's got to be how they do it moving forward with the good guys notion is that humans and mutants have to work together and coexist with one another. And uh, so we're not going to have so much the idea that humans suck anymore in the X-Men films. So it ended on a, on a good note, peaceful coexistence. So that is my wrap up of Days of Future Past. I know I spent a good deal of it trashing more of X-Men First Class again, but again, in case you didn't notice from the opening of this video, I hate X-Men First Class. I revile X-Men First Class. It, it disgusts me to my very core. But, Days of Future Past, so, so, so much better. And I blame a lot of the reason that X-Men First Class was such a failure on the director, Matthew Vaughn. And then, of course... They canned his ass, and they went back to the tried and true, the original X-Men films, what they are, and they went with Brian Singer instead. And for my money, definitely the better director between the two. So the guy who made the original trilogy, the excellent films that they are, and they went back to him, and he made Days of Future Past a return to form. Uh, bringing the X-Men franchise back to the awesomeness that it once was. So that is my review. Uh, X-Men Days of Future Past gets my thumbs up. I highly recommend it. And uh, hopefully the future X-Men movies will continue in that vein and being just that good. So thanks for listening, and I'll see everybody next time on the next edition of Random Fandom. <laughs>